What is up, my fellow humans? Hello and welcome to Tuesday night stream chat, talking about things that you know and some that you don't. Um, today, looking at uh, Fusion 360, some introductions to it, seeing, looking at some different ways to solve the same kind of problem. And uh, yeah, seeing how many different ways we can skin a cat, but I promise, yeah, no uh, cats will actually be harmed in the making of this episode. Uh, thank you very much for coming along. Um, right, so we're just gonna dig into this because there's a lot to do and um, yeah, I'm hoping that uh, it's useful. Fusion, Fusion 360, what is it? Look at Fusion, ta-da, Fusion. Um, if you've never seen Fusion before, this is what it looks like. It's a typical kind of like middle of the road CADS uh, application. And the idea of Fusion is that you can use it to create pretty and en well engineered solutions. I would, now, if you wanna do the kind of thing that thinks about like making D&D figs, mini figs, you know, or Warhammer models, or those kind of things that are kind of more organic, then you're probably going to want to favor something more along the lines of uh, Blender, or if you can, shell out for it, um, ZBrush. They're both more along the lines of take a lump and mold it into a shape. So, you know, bash it, pull it, stretch it. Whereas Fusion is about mathematics and it's about creating engineered solutions. And that's kind of why it's always really appealed to me. I've come from a very mathematical background up until leaving work to become a programmer. Hi, hi, not crimacy, how you doing? Um, yeah, I've, I come from a background of being a programmer um, until recently, having left to do full-time prop making. So being very mathematical suits me. So what we're going to do is look at a couple of uh, different ways of solving some solutions in Fusion and show you that there are many different ways to achieve the exact same thing. And then we're going to start building the M6, uh, uh, M6 CERN effects which is the uh, Carnifex, don't know why I got that one wrong, which is the next uh, model that we're going to be making. And I can show you how we're gonna size it properly and then break that down in order to be 3D printed really well. Oh. Now I'm gonna be talking a lot. So if anything's off volumes or um, anything like that, please let me know because I haven't streamed using this setup before and I have to keep the, the volume on the mic quite low because being a prop maker, there are a horde of 3D printers behind me whirring away. And if I have it too loud, you get whirs in the background. So I'm hoping that it's at a volume where you can hear me fine, but you don't get those things set up. And if you are interested in those kind of organic shape making kind of skills, we are going to start a, a piece about that on Thursday. And that's gonna run every Thursday at this exact same time where we're going to, I'm gonna learn Blender basically. I've never used Blender. I know how good it is. Um, I am very quiet. Okay, let me try jacking it a bit. Okay, let's see how how, how that is. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start learning Blender. And um, anyone can join that along with me. It's a free application. So, uh, all right, Gary, how you doing, my man? Hope you're keeping well. So if you are interested in learning Blender, come along to that uh, Thursday night one. I have literally never, never picked it up. I've installed it. It's about as far as I've got. Um, so yeah, that's going to be the goal. Um, is learning that and I'll give you the opportunity to learn it along with me. So we're going to just try and, you know, achieve some of the things that I take for granted using this. So this is Fusion. Fusion, if you like to think about it, is how you can turn maths and mechanical drawings into 3D things. If you've ever used 2D design applications that are vector-based like, uh, you know, Illustrator, then a lot of things in Fusion will come very naturally to you. Things like um, how you create two-dimensional shapes and then extrude them. And what extrude means is give it depth. Um, and how you can then cut things away and add two things in order to make a three-dimensional shape. So let me give you a few examples of something really, really simple. Um, and the like, kind of like the base idea of how it works, what some of the core, core tools use do. I'll go through like a few of these. And I'll be honest, a bunch of these I have never used. I've been using Fusion for a number of years and some of these I've never used. But I'll go through some of the most popular ones so that you can see what they're for, how they work, and what you might use them for. So let's start with 
sh shapes. Basically, everything comes from shapes, and they come from uh, creating a sketch. Now, when you want to create a sketch, you go to Create Sketch here. There are a bunch of shortcuts that I use. I'm going to try to not use them too much, but when I do, I will show you how I do them. The shortcut I use to create a sketch is L, which basically is asking it to create a line. Now, I may or may not want to use a line, but by pressing L, it gives me the option to start drawing. Um, so then I have to choose which plane do I want this to be on. Typically, it'll be the bottom one for me. And then, so to move around, I'm using, um, I think I'm using the default setup. You click, if assuming you've not got a, like a Mac magic mouse or something like that, you've got a, a standard two button with a center drag mouse. The middle button, clicking that will move you around. And you can't really see because the, or it's the, Origin isn't moving, but zoom using the scroll wheel will move you left and right. Um, the right hand side button does things like undo and redo. Um, we, we won't really get to that one for a little bit. Um, and uh, what else? Oh, um, holding shift and pressing the center button will rotate instead of instead of so you can move with the center button and rotate with the shift center button. Pretty good. Right. So we're going to start on this. We might want to look straight down on it. So this is the this is the viewer at the top right that you can, you know, go straight down on a, a point and this works at 45 degree increments so you can come to the front or 45 degrees up to it um, using this top when I can click it. This top one here, this takes us to 45 degrees, but generally speaking when you're drawing something you'll probably be straight onto it. So let's start with a couple of really simple shapes. So a circle. So I'm going to start with a circle here. And as I draw out, it asks me, well, what do I want the diameter of that circle to be? So let's say I'm going to want it to be 30 millimeters. Oh, that's too big. Let's go for just 20 millimeters. So there is a 20 millimeter circle. Not all that much to it at the moment, but when we finish the sketch, we're left with this kind of two-dimensional drawing, which we can then go and, uh, if you want to give that some depth, you can extrude it. So you can click this shape, click on Extrude up here, and then you can give it Height. And it starts to become a three-dimensional shape. And again, you can set it mathematically if you know exactly how far it wants to be. Um, you can do two sides if you want to give it depth in two directions different amounts or if you want them to both offset in the same direction like that or you can set this over here so every time you're using a tool you get its options on the right hand side you can click it to be symmetric which will do exactly what you're expected to do <coughs> all right come how you doing yeah it is this one is all maths and shit but you'll understand in a moment why there are multiple ways of doing the exact same thing and how actually not none of those are necessarily right nor wrong and I'll show you a couple of my favorite tricks a little bit further on, but we'll, we'll, we'll get a bit further into it before that. Whenever you're creating a, what's called a body, so you've got a sketch which is two-dimensional and a thing which has mass, that has three dimensions, is a body. And you'll get these basically five different options whenever you're creating a new body. Um, join, cut, intersect, new body, a new component. It's quite, important that you understand what those things do so we'll do those first so we'll just make this a 10 and there you go so this is a i guess it's the if you were to cut out a circle from a cube because it's 20 centimeters diameter and 20 centimeters uh, millimeters diameter 20 millimeters height so when i earlier then i i did that thing to draw on a surface using the sketch tool um i pressed l and then i clicked one of the origin points well, instead of clicking on an orange point, you can actually click on any flat surface. So I want to draw on here. And then if I take, uh, let's start with the, just the line tool. You can create a shape on top of here. And again, it doesn't really matter what that shape is at this point. We're just demonstrating it. <coughs> when you're done, I just whack escape. Um, and has it done the thing? Right, so. This is, this is interesting. So sometimes, if you're looking at it from an unusual angle, your points will try to click to something that's behind it. It will try to three-dimensionally go through it. 
So if we undo that, if we were to go then and look at this thing straight on the top and then complete that drawing, um, I'm not got the sketch, here's the sketch. So complete that drawing again. I won't have that issue because I've looked at it straight on, so it's not going to try to adhere itself to those some of those other points. I'm really good, thanks, mate. Um, it's been a long day. Uh, I had a lot of work on. Um, I put a load of props on the wall, so that was nice. Um, but I'm realising now my voice is really dry because I haven't said <coughs> right on cue. I haven't said anything all day, and now I'm chatting a lot. Coke Zero probably isn't helping, but there you go. So, we've created a random shape on the top here. So I said I wanted to explain the difference between join, cut, intersect, and new body. Why they're important. So if we extrude, if we finish this sketch, you don't have to finish your sketch in order to start the extrusion. You can just start the extrusion, but... And then the extrusion shortcode is E. It is one of the ones that I use the most. Um, so if I just press E, I then get the ability to play with this. Or if I click escape, you can use the other side. Okay, so what's the difference between the three, the four? So join, if I click, if I just leave it as its default join here, this will become one solid body. <clears throat> if I was to create a new body, then this one and the top one become two separate bodies so that they then moved independently. So if I just do that, for example, we've got body one here, which is the cylinder and body two. So these two can be kind of moved independently. Uh, if I undo that again, if we're going the other way, you can see it cuts the hole inside it. And it auto when it's going over in into oversecting an existing body, it automatically starts to cut. So that's why cut comes up on the right hand side. So this is basically when you see it's red, it's cutting a hole out. So if I was to cut all the way through, you would kind of see through it. Then the other one is intersect. What intersect it means is at the points where both of these things exist, use that. So it will just basically have that until the bottom. Because this is the point where both the body and the thing that I'm extruding intersect with one another. So that's the difference between those few things. As you've seen here, we can use a, a straight line tool to, um, sorry, I don't want to do that. Um, again, I'm clicking L here to go back into that sketch that I've already created here. So here's a few nice little things <coughs> that you can do when uh, drawing these kind of like sketches. First one is you might want to just use straight lines like this. You might not. So I just whack delete there and it goes away. Um, let's say I wanted to do things with rounded corners. There are a few ways I could do this. Um, we might have a few straight lines. So each time I'm going for a different line here, I'm just pressing escape when I'm finished and then pressing L um, and I'm creating a few different lines like that. Now let's say I wanted like smooth corners around all of these things. How would I go about doing that? There are a few different ways. You could use this thing, the fill, uh, fit point spline. What this does is if you start drawing it, it's very much like creating a path in Photoshop, uh, in Illustrator, sorry. You know, and it will just create you a a wiggly line that has a line of best fit. So what you might do is join up two points. Let's take these two and say yes. But then how do I make this into a good curve? You have these tools here, which are called the constraints, where you can basically define rules by which two things that interact with each other must follow. So this one here, tangent, is one I use constantly. So if I click on the tangent tool and click this one and this one, You'll see there, it makes it that the curve follows the tangent of the line. So if I do it again here and here, you end up with this kind of curve that fits that intersection. And it automatically kind of sides it so it's, it's pretty smooth. So it actually works really nicely. That's one way of doing that thing. Another one is you might just, if we say that, we're not actually using that line, and we actually have this from here to here. There is actually a tool here called the fillet, where you can click on a corner, or highlight a corner, and it'll start to give you the corner, and then you can just choose how far in you want it to be. So what this number in here is, is how far 
this radius inwards is. So it's the radius of the curve. Obviously it'll go as far as you want until it breaks basically. And this is really useful as well for actually putting together those curves significantly quicker. So there are a couple of ways of just doing those kind of joins. Um, if I just create this piece here, there's one thing that I learned recently because I've been doing it wrong for ages. And um, it was, what if I want to make this like an outer shell? And I want to have this as something that, um, uh, you know, has got a thickness which is consistent all the way around. What I was doing, very stupidly, was kind of drawing on here, saying, right, I want it to be, let's say, one millimeter thick. So I'll make a one millimeter thick thing here, and then I'll go around the edge, and I'll repeat it here. So I'll go at 90 degrees to that, out to one millimeter, and then I'll create another line here. So, you know, it's starting to build it in and build in this edge. That's all stupid. There's this tool here called the offset tool, which where you can just click the entire thing and go, okay, minus one millimeter, done. So it's a much faster way of achieving the exact same solution. Lots and lots of maths. So that's a couple of just ideas about extrusion and and, um, and uh, creation of shapes. And I'll be honest, a lot of what you do fundamentally in Fusion is creating 3D shapes, creating things that come off those 3D shapes and cutting them shapes away. For example, you use the fillet and the chamfer tool here a lot. So fillet is a rounded corner, which we can see if it allows me to actually fillet the corner. Oh, no. There we go, that one. So it gives us a, a rounded edge. Whereas chamfer, this one next to it, gives me a cutaway edge. But this one you can actually set to be two distances. So you can set these two independently of one another. That's one of the most useful things we'll use. But rather than going into the details of every single tool that Fusion has to offer, I thought it might be more useful if I was to build a prop and show you the process that I go through throughout that and answer any questions along the way. So, if you've been following along, you'll know that the next prop that I'm going to be building is the M6 Carnifex from Mass Effect. So, I've got some reference images here for it. Let's just take a look at what we're going to be making now. Typically speaking, I always recommend not building your models or your cosplays in general off other people's designs because you inherit the problems and the, and the issues that they have in their designs. So any mistakes that they've made, you replicate by replicating their work. This is one time I'm going to go against that because this is the sideshow collectible and this is official and this is basically as screen accurate as you will ever find a model of this, this prop. Um, so these are the reference images that I will be using to build this model. Fortunately, we have one that is side-on, full size. Um, so that's very, very beneficial. One thing that's really good um, or really useful is knowing exactly how to scale your props initially and get the layout for them. And you'll see with this prop it's going to be actually really quite quick there's not going to be a huge amount um, of work that has to be done to get it exactly right now there are loads of ways of scaling props to a person um, I could do a whole other session about that and I probably will at some point but right now I know because these guys have released this prop and it is official and it is officially sized that it is 317.5 millimeters from tip to toe so how do we ensure that we get that size right in Fusion? Well, what we do is we kick off. Oh, kick off with, where's the top? Make sure I'm the right way around, right. There's, there's top. So I'm going to build this gun as if it's stood upright, as opposed to being laid down. And as I said, I know that it is 317.5 millimeters long. 
off we go. Right. So it is that big. Da -da -da. Great. So what do I do from here? Right, finish that sketch. So this sketch is basically my templating line. This is how I then make the next bit in there. So I need to insert an image. Go into my drive, 3D models, mass effect, kind of effects, references, which is the side on full one. That one. Boom. Uh, and then I'm going to attach it to this face and I'm going to scale it. So basically, up this, up until which point it is basically filling end to end. So that's the furthest out sticky out bit there. Still slightly too small. Once you get close to the number, it's generally easier to just increase and decrease a percent or two at a time like this. So the back is bang on there. The front is pretty much bang on. So, you know, at worst case, it's going to be a millimeter or so out. So that's the baseline. So here is where my models start. Now, if I want to move this at all, you have the various things on the left-hand side, your origin, which is kind of like your center point of your design, your canvases, which are your various images, such as this one, uh, sketches, bodies, which we don't have here yet, and components, and components are multiple things that generally interact with one another. We'll use them a fair bit later on in this process, but they're not going to come in for now. We'll use that when we get to the uh, like animation stage of how this all builds together. So what would be my thought process now in order to build this model? We're going to basically go through everything that I would go through. Um, first up, it has a big shiny light that sat in the side of it which tells me that at some point in time, I'm just going to delete that sketch because I don't need it anymore. At some point in time, I'm going to want to add batteries. I'm going to want to add a way to remove those batteries. So given the size of it, what kind of batteries am I going to want to use and where am I going to house them? Good thing about this model is that it is quite chunky and it is, you know, it's pretty, pretty big. So there's a lot of options for where we could put batteries. We could put a small one in this kind of base unit at the very bottom. We could put one inside this top rail. Um, there are a bunch of different places. Like it strikes me as one of these side panels coming off, or maybe this one here. Um, let's just have a look at it from a, another few angles and just see if anything strikes like this here as well seems like potentially a good place for a battery component to be because um, this one could stick on with magnets quite easy and it's out of the way and it's not going to require too much routing then in order to bring the uh, things out in fact if you look at this really carefully you can see that it looks like that whole section there at the bottom is detachable because Whereas these ones have got solid molded lines all the way through them, that one's got like a little bit of a lip. So it strikes me as probably when the people who made this uh, did it, they they maybe put the battery and insert there, which would make sense. I'm very good, thanks, Beth. How are you? Welcome to the chat. Um, we're doing fusion things. Um, yeah, so that makes sense to me as a place to put it. It's pretty out of the way. Um, we could use magnets or... There's a bunch of different ways to actually get that hold on there. Um, and like I say, it's not going to require a lot of routing. And then we could use one of these switches live in order to do the uh, button. Either that or these could be used as press buttons. But I expect they're supposed to be rivets as opposed to be opposed to anything else. Um, okay. So we have our model in here. Um, the second thing I would think about for this model in particular, and actually a lot of models, is how big is my printer? What am I going to print it on? Am I going to want to print it on an FDM printer? 
with a like a large base you know a lot of them now are like the one i use is 30 by 30 by 40 centimeters so it can take a pretty big model um, whereas the resin printer has a maximum kind of like a 13 wide and almost 15 high um, though i have ordered a new resin printer today a mars 2 um, pro which is slightly bigger it's got 16 centimeter height as opposed to 15 and a bit so um yeah it's got that extra little bit i've just popped myself open a Bundaberg root beer. Mmm, quenching. So, if I was to just take a look at a couple of things, I can get start to just get an idea of how big things are. So this is like 17 up to here. So there's a natural line down here, there, and there's also one through the top here. So it might make sense for that to be a single piece. Uh, no, everything will not be too big for your Mars Pro, mate, because most of the things that I make are on... I also run Mars Pros, um, uh, so I understand that not everybody's going to have that extra 5 millimeters, and it's literally only 5 millimeters in height, and a little bit. I think it's the Mars Pro has 6.8 millimeters width, whereas the Pro 2 has 8... Sorry, centimeters, whereas the uh, whereas the 8 has... Sorry, the two has eight centimeters, so it's literally a small amount. It's not going to make a huge amount of difference. Um, but let's just check these seam lines again. So there's this one that runs down here, and yeah, it could like easily run across the top here, and these sections intersect. Um, so that strikes me as a good way to do it. So kind of this being one piece here. This being a separate piece with this texture on the bottom. These will be separate. And then a cutout and removable section for the grip. Um, and then, yeah, the rear grip, again, should just make sure that height fits in 14. 12 and a bit. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, do I have any plans to make any uh, helmet type props? Yes, 100%. Um, in fact, I'm sitting on a bunch at the moment, which I badly need to make. I've been gifted a, a, a Black Series Boba Fett, um, which I desperately want to print in the ESB original. I also have a, uh, a cold cast Boba Fett, which I want to do because I'm doing the new, um, I'm doing the new Boba Fett from Mandalorian and I wanted it to be completely wrecked so by having it cold cast means I can do the kind of the really wrecked paint and I also have oh and that's by um, Executioner Props uh, um, uh, uh, Wolf, Lion Wolf, Lion Wolf, Lion Wolf, Lion Wolf uh, Props it's his amazing one and I also have a Core Geek Mandalorian helmet which I have the Alamasta for now um, yeah, so I'm I'm gonna do that one first. But uh, models uh, take a different kind of skill to what I'm used to at the moment. And um, once we start going down the let's learn Blender path on Thursdays, uh, yes, helmets are 100% going to be something that I want to start doing more of because I think they're super cool and loads of people want them. Uh, so you know, doing this full time now, I have to kind of balance two things: what I want to make and what people want to pay for. So it's kind of finding that tasty middle ground but we're getting there um, and it will be something that we start to do a bit more of in the future so what i'm going to do with this gun now is just very very easily or very simply crop out a couple of pieces um, and start to figure out a couple of sizes of a couple of core bits and always have your kind of reference images close to hand because you're going to want to um, I want to refer to them a lot. For example, this piece is absolutely vital and it's going to be our starting point and you'll understand why in a moment. And the, in fact, you'll understand why right now. Because again, it is a prop that has an official version. I know exactly how wide it is. So looking again at that image there, at its widest point, it's 44 and a half millimeters. So you can assume here to here is 44 and a half millimeters which is going to be vital in a moment. What we're going to start with, though, is this, this, like, barrel at the front. And the reason why is because it allows you to show something really cool, 
um, as well as figuring out sizings. So I'm going to start by creating a line in the center plane. Uh, oh, why has it done that? Zoom into here. I'm going to create it roughly from here. Why is it not doing my lines properly? Come on, little fusion. There we go. Here to here. So as we're doing this, you've got to use a little bit of common sense, right? So it's around this kind of value. 25, 7 to 26-ish and a bit you could get away with. So I think if by doing that as 26 diameter, it's perfectly acceptable for this. So what I try to aim to do, especially when I realize that people do want to print these on FDM printers, is try to keep it to um, a point naught, uh, point 0.2 where possible. So 16.2, 16.4, 16.6, whatever, um, millimeters. Because then if you're using an FDM printer at point 0.2 layer height, it'll do those layers properly without it you know, wrecking itself. That being said, I do print at 0.02 to 0.04 on resin, so it becomes less of an issue. Um, but those are some of the considerations. So what I'm just going to do here is create a, uh, a line that's perpendicular from the center. Um, you may not notice that, but when you press the line tool, it will, it will indicate where the center is of any line, so it doesn't matter if it's measured or not. So if I was gonna do it again here, it will tell me that there's the center. Um, and then I'm going to put another bit at the bottom here. This gives me an opportunity to show you one of the tools that I really like, which is Rotate. So if I finish that sketch and I have this thing here, I can then create a, a sorry, a revolve, not a rotate. Create a revolve, I've already got it selected. So of this sketch, with the angle of being that line. And there we go. So, but only, even by looking at it side on, I can still ensure that that, ang that um, height and the width of that, that cylinder is actually bang on. Um, I'll do the same for the bottom one, just to repeat it. So let's start by putting a line down from here to here. You say, Comfy Socks, that satins ain't cheap, but I'll tell you what, for for what you get, I, I, I think they're they're remarkably good value. Um, 21 seems about right for that one. Um, you know, when you compare the the plate size that you get on them compared to a, ma a, a Mars or, a, or like a Photon or something like that, you do get a lot more bang for your buck. And it kind of depends what you want to make. Um, so again, stop that, go to the Revolve tool, it's already got it there, angle, there, Boom. great. So there are these two pieces, now let's just refer back to my reference images. What I'm going to do is show you a Photoshop trick, and this is a Photoshop trick that I use all the time um, in order to get my measurements accurate based on, on models, and it's the art of doing things relative to themselves. So here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to take this image, I'm going to open it in Photoshop. There are other ways you can do this. If you, uh, if you don't have Photoshop, um, you can literally use uh, a ruler. The principle will be exactly the same. So the idea is here, if I was to draw, if I was to get the ruler tool here and draw a point from here to here, Assuming that the maths that uh, the official model is is 44.5 is correct, I have this number here, 140, 140 basically, is that distance. And I also now know that I believe that distance, which I'm just going to write down, to be 26 millimetres. So based on that being 26 millimetres and this number here being 80, I need to figure out... <laughs> All right, Chris, you big hunk of tree. Um, if you like, if you like watching design humans uh, do their design work and showing you about their stuff, you definitely need to be following Redwood Creations. He does really cool, 
graphic design and video uh, photo composite work um, and showing you the step by steps for them. Definitely recommend it. Um, right, so yeah, so this is currently 80, right? But I know this distance to be 26. So how can I get one to be representative of the other? What I'm going to do is assume that 26 is actually going to be 260. The reason is I don't want to ever make this picture smaller. The smaller the picture is, the harder it is to pick up measurements from it. So I'm going to want it to be 260. So maths time, how do I get from 80 to 260? What we do is we bring up another Chrome window. Oop, bear with me, sorry. It apparently does not want to let me drag this window up. There we go. So I'm going to go to a calc tool. So we want to end up at 260. We're currently at 80. So that means I need my image to be 3.25 times the size that it currently is. So if I go into here now and then I go image, image size, and I make it 325%, that'll be 3.25 times the size that it currently is. Boom, so there we go, big. So now when I measure this, it tells me my distance basically there at the top, 2652 you know, 260. So I know that 260 on this measurement is now the same as being 26 millimeters. So I'm hoping based on this, this is about 44. And there you go, 44. 44 and a half is the official width. So that means that this ruling has, has gone pretty much bang on. So why I would want to do that is that I can then use this inner one here say okay so we're talking 17 there is that right 16 and a half 17 and then the bottom one is uh, 14 so let's go 17 and 14 so if I look at these from the front now and I create a circle so I just quite pressed C which is a quick for circle and then I said 17.5 for that one and I think uh, 14 for the bottom one. Great. So then if I click E to extrude, I can take that out of both of those. Um, if a, Whenever you use a, um, a sketch for the first time, it will remove the sketch, but it's still there. You can just re-add re it on here, and then, then it will stay until you get rid of it. Um, what's really interesting about sketches and one of the good things about fusion in, in general is that it has all this kind of like history of all the moves that you've made down here. So if you want to go back a couple of things, go back a couple of steps and see what point, what it was like when it was at that point. You can also say, take this piece, this move here and just click delete and get rid of that one without affecting everything else that you've done. It's like being able to choose your undos. Um, it's things that are really powerful. Also, you can actually... Um, if I go back into this sketch, I reload that sketch and change that to 19. When I then come out of that sketch, that change will have been reflected in the cutaway. This is kind of like the whole point of uh, the whole point of fusion and the ability that it has to do the things it does. Um, right, so there we are. Let's take a look. And these corners here have got a slight fillet on them. So this one, no maths, just eyeballs. So maybe start with one. Yeah, I think that's probably. And then generally speaking, you'll have one on the inside that's usually pretty small, 0 0.4, something like that. 0 0.4 is a go-to um, fillet for me when I want to give something a slight, tiny bit of an edge, um, but I because I just don't want it to be sharp, but I also don't want it to be really curved. It just softens it ever so slightly. Okay, so now because we did our maths on this thing, we get we figured out that this is indeed forty-four millimeters, um, which is great because this looks like all the way down the entire body is one big chunking bit of the same size. So it means we can start to create this pr 
pretty easily. So I think it'll actually be easier to create this whole front section and up this diagonal here in a sing in fact it might be easiest just to create the entire upper body in a single piece and then cut it apart as opposed to making it as a as multiple parts but there are multiple ways to do, achieve the exact same problem i'm going to give you an example of that now right let's say i want to have um uh two circles one smaller than the other with the edges kind of like um angled up so it's almost like a cone that you've cut the top off um, say you wanted to achieve that there's like lots of different ways you could do it so for example you could take a circle here of that size and then you could just extrude it and then um, chamfer it down um, with two distances so you'd end up like with you know two circles with the point and you can just basically take that one until it dies. So you could do it like that or you could take this piece, oh, I've gone back too many, take that and then you could right click and do an offset plane and go up to where we want the top one to be and then look down on it and on this new offset plane create a new smaller one with our new size there so you've got the top and bottom and then you click one and then the other and then you create a loft and what a loft does is go from one piece to another it like joins the two in a solid point so that would be another way of doing the exact same thing just by approaching it in a different way so one of the things that i really love about fusion is that it allows you to solve problems in the way that you want to solve problems as opposed to necessarily dictating there's a right way to do this like i said in the kind of like intro to this there are many ways to skin a cat and this just kind of proves it so what i'm why reason i went off on that slight tangent there is that i am actually weirdly and i'm going to flip this around because i prefer designing guns pointing to the left I don't know why. I think it's a bit like FIFA. I only like playing FIFA when I'm shooting right. If I'm shooting left, I fall apart. That being said, I haven't played FIFA in a very, very long time. Right. So <clears throat> we know this bit here in the middle is thinner because we can see it in this image here. So I'm going to concentrate on this outer edge, which goes all the way round. Um, let me just bring up the uh, where have you gone let's just check it from another couple of angles so yeah it goes all the way round across the top to the back if anything that might be ever so slightly inlay there it's hard to tell from that angle yeah it does it does look like this one here is a bit thinner so either this has to taper in or this tapers out. Um, okay, so I'm going to concentrate on this front bit up until this line, and this front bit, just because then this is a this is a different problem to solve. So I'm just going to whack L for line, and then I'm basically going to trace it. It's tracing for adults. So let's start here, and again, I'm going to want to try and keep these as much as I can to kind of numbers that make sense so here could be bang on 11 for example then this one this one you can see the um the bottom one actually comes back further and it overlaps the bottom if we uh see here you can it overlaps the bottom of this piece so it's okay to be amongst it here so 56 Point eight. Let's try fifty-seven. Yeah, fifty-seven. Keeping to whole numbers is good. Like I said, uh, ninety-two, ninety-three, ninety-three. Um, diagonals are the exception to that rule. Diagonals literally don't give a fuck. Um, I mean, what you could do here, hypothetically speaking, 
is you could go, right, okay, I know I'm going to go there, so I want to come up this distance. How far do I want to come up? So 26.6, 27, yeah, 27. And so then I want that to come out to here. Because at least then, if I'm printing it this way up, I know that the print lines between those two points there are going to be fine. And then you can just click on these two that you don't need and click delete. It's nice to try and keep your sketch at least a little bit pretty. Um, here, because of the way this sweeps, what I'm actually going to do is just ignore that cut in the corner there and come back to that later. So now again, using that, that same method, let's go up to the top. So 78. Again, you know, you could be really anal about it. And I, I admit I have been, I have been at, oh, that is not parallel. In fact, this, this whole thing is not parallel here. So these are two different heights. I have been incredibly anal about this stuff um, in the past and like tenths of millimeters. And I'll be perfectly honest, in the end, you kind of learn that it, to a degree, it doesn't matter. Unless you're, um, you know, you're specifically making something, say for an industry professional or the original person that made the design, um, uh, then they, they honestly don't give a, give a honk. Um, <laughs> don't give a honk. But the reason I kind of care about these numbers is that now, instead of just presuming that it's me making these things, I'm hoping that there's multiple people making my work. A um, little thing, I've just pressed T. T, which is this thing here, trim. And what that allow me to do is, like, that's a single line, but what it'll do is it'll trim the lines on the bits that you kind of don't need. Um, uh, and so I, I kind of, I'm trying to care about the fact that other people will be making these on printers that I don't even, you know, know anything about. Um, and, you know, you can't take it for granted that everyone's going to be using the same printer and the same setup as you are. So you have to try and be as kind of like versatile as you can. I just realized I did that then with absolutely no concept of how far I made it. 18.24, there we go. And then connect all these ones. So here it looks like it's probably a curved edge. Let's just have another look at it. Oh, so that's actually the inside piece. Okay, so I don't need that at all at the moment. Get fucked a little bit. Great, there we go. Yes, so in the end, it doesn't even matter. I mean, but I did try so hard and I did get so far. It just, just didn't matter. Um, okay. You're going to see some cool stuff about these uh, constraints in a bit when it comes to like these cutaways. Uh, also this bit here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of model this center cutout at the same time. I could quite easily uh, do this as, actually, because of this cutout shape. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna start by cutting out this by the very middle piece which should make sense shortly. So 20 to here. This is all diagonals, which as we just learned, like diagonals don't give a fuck. Diagonals are the devil's work. 0.5, 0 0.6, yes, 0 0.6. Anything that can go in 0.2s, love it. Okay. 
So the reason I'm doing this middle bit here is I just showed you that loft tool. If we've got this as a blank space in the middle, when it's extruded out and has width, we can draw the outside bit on the external edge and then loft the external to the internal, which will give us the angled cutaways. Yeah, science and shit. Um, again, I think that's just a rounded edge. Oh, look at that. There's a little bit of a, okay. So it doesn't cut away all the way in. That's, that's, oh, that's good to know. I think that's the only image of it. Yeah, okay. That's fine, that's fine. We good, we good. So, yeah, I'm going to just cut this one straight. And the reason you'll see shortly. And you can, you can grab any of these tools and they will generally keep their constraints. So now I have this. And come on, chat. How many... How many millimeters wide was it supposed to be? Who remembers? Drum roll, please. Yeah, no worries, comfy mate. So I'm gonna extrude it. It was no forty-four. Boom. Oh, I've just that's horrible. Forty-four. You're right. It was for, it was actually forty four point five, but I'll let you off. So twenty two point two five, half of that, symmetrical, and that's a new body. Ta da! And there you go, finished gun, complete. What more do you want? Yeah, I guess we should probably do some more. So you can double check that and go from there to there. 44 and a half. What happens when we look at it compared to the front uh, of here? So it looks wide. The reason it looks wide is because this cut in here actually makes this shape really deceptive. Now it does look... It does look... I'll tell you what I've, I've mistakenly done here, right? And this is fine, this happens all the time, is when you photograph something that's real, you get an element of forced perspective, right? So if you hold something close to you, um, let's say this mouse, what it actually does is distort ever so slightly at each edge. So as you can see, when I've done these two pieces, You've got the distortion that you get from seeing it at a slight angle, because you see it at like 32, whatever it is, 32 somethings. Um, so what you generally do is pick a single point, uh, and like the left-hand side edge, the middle, or the top, or, you know. So for this thing, this thing is actually, let me just get rid of these two bodies for now. Um, this thing here at the end is actually like pretty much flat, but it looks domed, and it looks domed because you're seeing it from an angle, and it's a bit more obvious on this bottom one. So if you take a tube and look at it from the side on, you see it as a curve. So what I've done is done these two pieces too far in. So what you can do is just click M, which is your move tool, and just bring them out. And this is, generally speaking, why you want to, uh, why you want to keep things as individual bodies at least until later on in the build process because in later on in the build process you might want to just start throwing them all together uh okay so we're going to do a couple of like the cutaways so i think this one here that the light is in is a good one to start with so this thing here um you'll see that it's you know generally a chamfered so a, a straight cut thing, but it's got an ever so slight softness to it. Um, and then obviously a curve at that end. That's all fine. And we can figure out how deep it's supposed to be because of this thing that we've already got with the maths on it. So if we say that the width of that is 42, and we know the whole thing is 44 and a half, 42, well, 44.5, obviously minus 42 gives us 2.5 divided by 2, which means it's a 1.25 millimetre drop on each side. 
bits. Um, so what we'll do is we'll look at one side. Now with a gun like this that is mostly symmetrical, you could either do everything that you want to do and then as like, so let's say, I'll, sh I'll show you again, right, two different ways of achieving something and why I would always go for version two. So this cutaway it, here exists on both sides. So what I could do, I'm not gonna do it properly. I'm just gonna do a rough one. So let's say, uh, it seems that it's bang centered on the origin somehow. Uh, so let's just, let's just do a really rough one that doesn't matter, so like seven. Um, okay, so let's say that was our cutaway here. What you might do is cut that in. So we said it was minus 1.25, right? So it goes in that far. What you might do there is create a new body and OK. So it's there as a new thing. And then you create a mirror of that. So you need to click bodies and create a mirror of that body down the center plane and have another one appear on the other side. And then using the combine tool, I know it's called combine, but it's going to do multiple things. So combine will either do join things together, cut one thing from another, or find the, find the intersection, which is that thing that we looked at earlier on is this thing. So you might start with this tool uh, or the target and say, right, I want to use this tool and this as a tool and I want to use them to cut out. So then you end up with this. So I whack enter. So you end up with that. So that's one way of doing it. But the problem is then you end up having to create everything. You have to create a new body, then you have to take it away and blah, 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 blah. What's much easier with a tool, something like this is to build the entire thing on one side and only give a shit about one side. Then when you're done, cut the entire body in half. So what we'll end up with, actually, let's, let's just put that thing back in. So let's say we've cut out this on one side. What we're then gonna do is split this whole body down the middle. And then one, the other side, the, the left, right hand side, remove that. So you end up with one side. And then create a mirror of this one down the middle. And then join them back together. So that way we can put all the details into just one side, only care about one side, and then just cut it in half and flip the whole thing over. It's generally speaking going to be the easiest way of achieving something like this. And so that's the method I'm going to take. Um, so right now we want to uh, we want to size this thing up. And really that thing does look like it's bang in the middle of the origin. And I think that's a complete accident. If I start in here and go up and down and just see. So this inside edge I'd say here is 4. No, 3.8. And if it is the same on the other side, then it means I can, yeah, 3.8, 3.8, right, okay. Because it is 3.8 on both, I can add a circle over here. God, that was really lucky. Of whatever 3.8 times 2 is, 7.6. And then if I click on here and just click M for move, I can just you know, make sure I get it positioned in the middle of that of that kind of swerved cutaway. Now I want to make sure the lines that come to the side of here are kind of directly um, perpendicular to the top and bottom. Easiest way to do that is to press L to get your line tool up. And just go vertically through there, boom. Or you could just actually go and you can just stop on the edge. And then same going downwards. Then you can create one from that point at a 90 degree angle and it will just lock to that 90 degrees. So then you know that that thing is all 
perfectly uh, set up like that. So then you can again press T by pressing T to trim and trim out those pieces. And if you remember, this thing needs to go in. So I'm going to press E to extrude, but I'm going to go, instead of extruding outwards, I'm going to extrude inwards. So I'll start with a minus 1.25. Um, and then look at that. So how does that look compared to our reference? It seems small to me, but you know, the maths don't lie. Let's just check it again. It's probably because when this thing cuts out, which is the next bit we're going to do, it deceptively makes it look a bit longer than it is. We'll see in a moment. So here is, let's say 40, 45, maybe a bit out there. So if that's saying 45, and that's saying 40, you know, 40, 42, 45 so maybe maybe I do want to go my gut says it's a little bit small but I've already cut it out but I don't need to do undo and then change it what instead I can do is go to this activity timeline down the bottom and it just gives you a recap of all the things you've already done so you can take any one of these and when you hover over it it'll show you like on up here what it was you did so let's say I wanted to change that fillet if you double click on this you can go and go back and retroactively change what you did so if I change that to two it then apply it sometimes that has a knock-on effect and it goes and changes a load of other things sometimes it doesn't um, you'll know when it does because it takes a little while to uh, render so that extrude I took back 1.25 I'm just going to up it slightly to 1.5 and then because I want it to have that swept in cutaway I'm going to chamfer the outside edge to start with um, and I'm going to do it at two distances and this one's going to be a little bit about playing it by ear but I know in order to, for hit, to hit the very bottom one of them at least has to be 1.5 so if I pull up the image next to it you know what, I think it's probably it's probably about right if anything I think this one here needs to be ever so slightly smaller. So one is 1.5, the other one maybe 1.2. So it's 1.5 in, which means it hits all the way in. No, 1.2 isn't enough. Three. You know what? I think it's 1515. Great. That's fine. But then I want to just give it that slight slight fillet on the edge so again i'm going to there's you use the fillet tool at the top fillet which means a rounded edge um but i shortcut it with f and you go on this edge and if you remember i said 0 0.4 is kind of like my give it a slight lip but not so that's a good start but and yeah i think that's probably about right maybe a little bit more again sometimes you just have to feel it 0 0.8 maybe as high as one yeah, I think one's good. What's interesting about fillet though is not only can it cut away like that, but it can cut inwards. So if I was to grab this bottom edge and do a fillet of one, it'll cut that inwards so it'll reduce an inside edge as well. So you end up with that, which looks a lot nicer. It's just it's just sometimes it, you don't really get an appreciate it appreciation for it at this point later on when we get into kind of like the point when we start to render these models um, then you start to get a feel for why you want to do those things um, because it gives it that little bit more realism that's a that's a way off yet okay obviously as I am blattering on about this if you do have questions or you want me to go back over something and just clarify anything please do let me know um i know i can you know it'd be very easy to just storm through all of this so if you do have any questions feel free to uh, ask them I'm looking at this bit here uh i've got a feeling that let's have a look 
be gone. That dark bit. Oh no, it's a shadow, but it should come down a bit further here. You see. Yeah, so this bottom line here, I just want to bring down ever so slightly. What you can do is find your old sketch of it so it's there. And then you could just hide the body like a good murderer. Oh no, so that isn't the sketch of it. That's just because it was on that face. That's the sketch of it. Uh, grab those two and move them down. And then as soon as I bring the bodies back, they're there. So you can actually see if, I, if I'm playing around with this in live updates. Because what it's effectively doing is going back um, to the start. And uh, it's going back to when you did that thing. It's making the change and then it's reapplying it through the steps. And this is why if you ever see people who are in the 3D modeling world talking about step files. It's a thing like on my higher patron tiers, I give people the step files. And what the step files are is basically these this thing at the bottom it's the set of rules that go from the very start to the very end that allow you to create a thing it's the steps that you go through which is why it's called the step file and that same thing works across a lot of different applications so there are some that uh you know you use the same step file across fusion and you know across um across blender and across or lots of different auto cadding tools now there is a, a, a light hole here. <clears throat> I'm almost tempted not to worry too much about the light right now. And the reason is because I'm gonna to have to figure out the hollowing and the hollowing is gonna be a whole other problem. What I will do is show you something interesting which is these two cutaways and it's using one of those constraint tools. So I'm gonna click L and click on this side bit. I'm gonna start by making two lines across the, a line across the top here and a line across the bottom. Now it's pretty obvious that this line here needs to be exactly parallel to this line. Now there are two ways you could do that. You could click the offset tool. Um, here, if you remove chain selection, well if you, if you were to just try and grab that, it'll grab the entire outside edge. If we remove chain selection, it will just grab the one edge we're looking at. And then we could bring it in to also cross those things there and say if it was 10, or sorry, minus 10, that's pretty much spot on there. And that means those two lines are in exactly parallel. The other way you might do it is do it roughly like that, and then click on the parallel tool, click the one that you're using as a reference, the one you want to move, and it will just twist them so that they're both parallel. They're both completely valid ways of doing the exact same thing. Again, like I, I keep saying, there's not necessarily a right way to do a lot of this. Um, a lot of it is just finding your way. So then I want to, um, so then if I click this 10 here and remove it, that constraint gets removed, which gives me freedom to then play with this line. So I'm going to control paste CV and decide how much I want to move it to make this first one. Minus 4.8 seems good to me. And then if I take both of these lines, control, I can move them onto the next one, which means they're then even widths, even thicknesses. 9.2, beautiful. So now I can just click those two points. I don't need to trim it if I don't want to. Click on E to do the extrusion. Check my reference images to like see how deep I think they need to be so a millimeter probably so minus one what's good is you can just do it you can apply it and then look at it and just go is it too deep and if you think it's too deep let's say I actually thought that should be 0 0.8 again you can go to the tracking the steps at the bottom and just go actually minus 0 0.8 is is perfectly okay for those and actually I think 0 0.8 is perfectly okay for those. Then again they have slight kind of you can see on the image there 
um, they have slight curves at the tops and bottom. So we can just do those with the fillet tool. So this, because, because of the angle that it's at, and because the both ends are symmetrical, the bottom left corners and the top right corners are the same angle. And then similarly, the top left corners and the bottom right corners are the same angle, but all four aren't the same. So me applying a one degree, uh, sorry, a one millimeter radius curve here will not give me the same feel as a one millimeter radius curve here. So that'll be best to do independently. So I'm going to click F to do my fillet and do one, two, three, four, and go back to the left. And then let's start with say one, one millimeter, uh, 1 1.2. Yeah, okay. So there's those four done. And then again, a lot of the time with this stuff, it's that mix, you know, of what is mathematically correct and what feels right. And like, there was, there's a big thing that was like a massive case in the design industry with the Google logo and the Google G logo. And see, see there, if I was to put that 1.2 millimeter radius on that side, it looks way bigger. Um, so it's not right, it just doesn't balance. So 0.6 is still too big. 0.5, yeah, I think that finds, that feels about right. Yeah, there you go. Um, the thing with the Google logo, the G logo, check this out um, oh no Google logo not perfect right so this was this annoyed a load of people the fact that if you look at a perfect circle in the Google logo it doesn't quite hit it it, it dips in and when you look at it here this is the perfect one perfect one and this is the not perfect one. And you see the perfect one, it feels like it's got an underbite. And that's because in aesthetics and in design, perfection doesn't always mean perfection. It doesn't have the balance. Um, so what they did with this logo was give it that slight, you know, tuck in at the bottom part of the G in order to prevent that underbite feel, which is just brilliant, brilliant design. Um, But yeah, and like the the fact that, that none of these are balanced, the colours aren't balanced correctly, and it's because yellow in visual aesthetics is a lot more over overpowering. Uh, yeah, so they they reduced the amount of it that was there. Right, onwards. No more calc. We don't need that. Oh. So we've got the cutaways there. What else do we need? Okay, we need to do the same thing here. So do these need to be parallel to this top line? I believe probably. And that's just made me think actually, is this line here and this line here, are they parallel? Or should they be parallel? What we can do is go in and actually just apply that parallel to them. Ooh, and it's cocked it right up. Okay, that's fine. So let's get rid of that there and that there. Let's just add a line here and the old line in parallel. I mean, if if they are supposed to be parallel, I've got, you know what, I've got a feeling they're not. Either that or it's that, it's that effect again, that kind of like slightly looking at things from an angle. I think that maybe this one and this one are supposed to be parallel. 
but the ones inside are not. No, no, looking at it again, it's it's thinner here than it is there. So fuck it. I'm, I'm right. I was trusting my first design. Let's just undo all of that. There we go. Okay. All good, all good, all good. Moving on. Uh, so these lines here, if I just put a line on this side and then check its parallel parallelness, what do we think? Yeah, that feels like these are probably parallel to that though, which is fine. So let's start with one here. What was the last one? 4.8. I think that's probably going to be the same. What you find when you uh, when you get good at this is that you end up keeping a lot of numbers in your head, or either that, or maybe that's just the particulars of how my brain works because I, I hold lots and lots of numbers so again 12.8 so it's 12.8 in both directions which means they're all evenly spread and then we can just do a chow on there on there and then do the same, boom, boom, boom. Again, if that's the way your brain works, you'll know that that's minus 0 0.8. But just to show that there's another couple of ways of doing this, what I can do is use the T to trim, get rid of all these edges. Not that I have to for what's about to come, but it just makes the demonstration of it a little bit simpler. So let's get rid of all these. Now I could do this three times or I could do it once wouldn't really matter either way but if you click this radius tool the or sorry fillet tool up here and go there there oh no you see it's it does it one at a time it doesn't batch them I remember now so fillet tool for here um on the last one was one point two will say about keeping lots of numbers in your head so again 1.2 and then the other one was 0 0.5 so here 0 0.5. 0 0.5 so then if I just get rid of these two be easier just to take this one here so if I click on a certain a single line, it'll select the line, but double clicking on it will create the entire shape. And I can control V, move it that 12.8 that I just did. And then again, another 12.8. And then bring all these in. E to extrude, minus 0.8. So when we're here, we ask ourselves, do we want these to have a slight fillet on the outside edge? I'm going to expect probably yes. Let's just take another look at the design. So yeah, these definitely aren't sharp edges. They're softened. Um, and they're softened about the same amount this is. And this one, if you remember, is one millimeter. I don't think they're going to need one millimeter though. So let's just have a look. So if we take all three of those and then both of these outside edges here, and then just deselect that. So one would look like that, which is pretty soft. And it, you know it's really soft because the fillet then is actually rounder than the depth of the cutaway. So the maximum you would really want to do that is 0 0.8, which is kind of like the cutaway depth. Um, Again, though, let's you know refer to our references. This is why we have them here. I'm going to say that that is two things are wrong here. One, that one doesn't cut away. These ones cut away at 90 degrees, and then fill it in. So this this bit is wrong. So I'm just going to undo a few bits. I should have looked at my references. So I'm going to undo this a bunch. 
Okay, so I get to here. And from here, I'm just going to take a right angle. And then from here, right angle. I'm going to get rid of all these. Bum, bum, bum. And then move these out to like the widest part of the inside points. Some more like that. And then get rid of these. And I can, again can do the fillets, but I think I'm going to do the fillets afterwards for a reason that will be obvious in a minute. Because you'll just be able to, because all four of them are going to be happening at the same time. I don't want it to be a full like circle, um, a full half dome on the end. Uh, but I also, I kind of want to see all four at the same time. So it'll be easier just to um, do it as fillets. Uh, eight. Okay, so I'm going to take all three of these. Dun, dun, dun. Extrude minus 0 0.8. Uh, so I've accidentally done 0 0.8. So they're sticking out. So again, like I said, I can double click on that. And then just change the amount in the settings and they'll... Oh, no. What happened there? I should have just undone. Well, let's try again. One, two, three. Obviously I'm holding shift when I do a multi-select like that. As you would expect to in kind of any design package. But like I say, I want to see all of these things happen at the same time. Just because then I'll get a nicer feel for how they're reacting. Three. And then just the bottom ones. One, two, three. So the absolute max that this could be is like four point no four point eight, right? So the maximum if these this radius that we're doing there was two point four, it would not work apparently. Oh yeah, it's because yeah, it's because it's four point eight with the two diagonal lines at a acute at an obtuse intersect. So when you change that to a 90 degree angle, that doesn't apply. It's actually smaller. So it's around two, but that's too, that's too big. I want it to be one point something. Basically wants to be softened, but not a complete semicircle, something like 1.6. There we go. And then I'm going to reapply these fillets to this top edge. I'm going to start with my basic 0.4. Um, Six maybe. Nice. Yeah, no point six. Let's go with that. And then it means I'm going to just apply the same not point six over here. This gives me a similar level of softness. And there's uno mass of one of these things to do. So these two here. Which let's again check the references. Do they need to be? So these are slightly more sharp edged than the others. Um, and I'd say ever so slightly deeper as well. But these ones will be the easiest because it's just literally horizontal and vertical lines. Um, um, so let's go for oh, 50. Let's go for 50. Just click M for move. So I want this one to come down. That was a control V. Just go minus 2.4. And then take both of them. Control V. Control C, control V. And six. No. V. Minus six. And then just line from top to bottom. Again, 
T to trim, remove these two lines, and then minus one. That's 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 not done what I wanted. I could do it, just go back and edit, but I could do minus two. There you go. It does the exact same. So one add minus two is the same as minus one. And then there needs to be a slight curve on these ones, but not nothing huge. I have talked non-stop on this for the last hour and a half. Like I said, if you do have any questions or any specific things you would like to see, please don't feel afraid to shout out. So we're going to start with a 1 here. It's always, you know, pick a small number or something that feels in the right ballpark. So that's way too much, for example. So 0.5... What does the reference image say? Oh, that's interesting. Oh no, it's over here. Okay. Uh, 0.5 is a little big, so 0.4. Uh, and then I'm also going to add the fillet on these two edges. If you remember last time I did 0.6. Again, I think that's a bit too a bit too extreme on these two cutouts. Yeah, okay. So if I just remove the canvas, you start to get an idea of where we're get, getting to. If I remove that sketch that we don't need. As you can see, the details are starting to come in. Uh, I wanted to show you the trick I was going to talk about around um, creating the loft to do this this cutaway because this cutaway is a little bit more of a complex problem um, so right the question is how deep is that now we could do the same trick as before and maths it or we could kind of play it by ear I'm feeling I'm feeling that this needs to be accurate, so let's maths it. Um, so I take this image, open with Photoshop, and uh, it's good just to repeat the same process that so you can see exactly what we did. So I'm just going to create a line, a vertical line from here upwards. And the reason I created the vertical line there is because I want to use the center point here as my guide. So my current center point here is going from there, which I believe to be the center, to the point of intersection, which is there. And that is 43. 43. So 44. So this is pretty much half. So if I take any number on this and halve it, that's going to give me the number that I want, which is fine, because that's pretty basic maths. So going from here, the first cutout goes to there, which is 22. So it's half. OK, great. So the actual thing here is 44 wide. So measuring that middle bit to 22 means that it's half the way through. So what I'm going to do is something a little bit cool. I'm going to take this body, this whole body. I'm going to, on this thing here, right click and do an offset plane, which basically is giving me a new, a new tool by which to do stuff. And I'm going to go in 11, because that's that 22 divided by 2 is 11. So here's that. So that's where it's going to intersect. Then I'm going to split that whole body based on that splitting tool. So now this bit and this back bit are different pieces. So I can get rid of this back bit and just use this front bit for now. Then what I'm going to want to do is just hide that construction plane. So these these thing anything that you make which uh, is used for building something 
It's called a construction plane or a construction tool. It's usually planes. Um, they'll be hidden in there in construction. Now I want to turn the canvas back on and draw this outer shape. Uh, and then, but I, before I do that, I do want to make that a couple of fillets in here just to just to make it feel a bit more authentic. Let's go for 1.6 there, and these ones basically just have them as you know, just little, just tickle the edges. So that's the kind of the inside edge. Now I want to draw on this outside edge. So on this top plane, let's start here and I'm just going to do it with straight lines. So again, I think these two parts here need to be parallel, same way as I do over there. So let's just draw it roughly here and then click parallel from there to oh it's already it's already applied it I was I was close enough to it that it did it automatically um, another line across the bottom and then one up there and what do we remember about diagonals they do not give a fuck um, just want to move this in a bit so I can use it. So yeah, if you get close enough to parallel, you'll see the, the double parallel lines in the middle there appear. It's basically telling you that it's automatically trying to snap to that, which is actually really useful. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this one is use the, um, the uh, fillet tool. Let's get rid of those. And these, so T there to trim. And just get rid of the kind of offshoots. And you can use the fillet tool up here. I don't want it to be anywhere near that big. What are we talking? 1.6. Um, let's just do that going all the way around. Again, 1.6. I think is probably about good for that one. Something down here. Ooh, that is trying to do a big one. No, sorry. like 1.4 and then a couple just for yeah something like that 1.4 again One point two. yeah right so now I've got this piece here and I've got this back piece so what I'm going to do is click on this piece and then click on the inside of this block here, which I, I'm going to need. Okay. I'm going to need a way of clicking on this inside of this thing. So what I can do is create a new box on this inside and just create a square just around here. Finish that. That should give me that there. So there's one. That's the inside. The, and then click the outside plus it's inner there so it's one big piece and then do create loft and it will join those two pieces together and automatically do a cut because it's trying to cut so when I cut that it's going to cut from that inside panel to the outside panel like that now you can see it's done a couple of kooky bits here probably to do with the way that the corner interactions were. Oh, and it's followed, it's followed a couple of weird paths. 
which is sometimes fine. So for example, here, you could just click those bits and click delete. And it'll either fix it and smooth it out or it'll wreck it or it won't do anything. Like that's the other option. So sometimes you just end up going in and trimming out things that are problematic, like that one there. It's now gone. But again, this, this one looks weird. And it looks weird because it hasn't followed the paths properly. So there are ways of, of sorting that. What I need to do is give it a set of rules from what goes to where. So really, it's like the top of this corner here goes to the top of this corner here and vice versa. So if I go to line and create a new thing in any plane, remember at the very, very start of this thing, I said sometimes your things will accidentally like line up with each other. Um, if it sees something through the back, this is a time where you want that to happen. So if I click on that point, I can then click on that point. Right, so this is creating a line between those two points in 3D, 3D space, like that. So I just want to rinse and repeat that for all of these corners. And what I'm going to do is basically say to this cutaway that when you get to these corners, this is how I want you to treat those, those changes. I want you to treat it as... Um, I want you to basically follow these lines. These are going to create guides by which the rest of the design follows, which will make sense in a moment. It'll just stop it kind of like oh, skewing at those corners. Last two, so there to there, and there to there. All right. So that looks generally good. So let's finish that sketch. Now I'm going to want to do the same thing as before. So click on this back piece, then these two front pieces, create a loft. But this time, I want to add rails here. So these are basically saying, follow these things. So if you click on all of these, it'll tell it to define the loft by those rules where possible. And you can already see how the, like, the kookiness of the loft, and like at this top left one, for example, and see if you look carefully when it's up here and tell by the, the way that it's buckling at the top that it's not figuring out properly how to move through the corner. It's finding it a bit difficult to select those lofts from that side. Let's try from the other side. Come on. Hmm, why is it not wanting to add those lofts? What about these ones down here? Rails, sorry, not lofts. Okay, so let's just remove the back. Let me just add the rails first. not adding those is it because I don't have the profiles in okay okay it's going to be difficult I think maybe I'd uh, clicked on something that stopped it doing the rails so let's click on the rails again add yeah okay there we go and there we go so now all those rails are selected there should be 10 there you go. So ra 10 rails, two profiles. Okay. So when I do that now, you'll see that, yeah, those inside 
edges are much like nicer defined than they were before. What I can do now is add in that back body that we had before, which doesn't have the fillet in it, which is annoying. Um, but it's fine, it's fine. Um, and then uh, and then join the two back together. So let's just combine this front piece that we've been working on with this middle piece, join them back together and they're a single piece. Now, as I just said, these other bits didn't have that fillet on, so we're going to end up with something a little bit weird here. But it's nothing that we can't solve because we can just click on these fillet bits from the inside. There's a bunch of ways of doing this. Um, oh, I just I wasn't holding shift then, so that will go away. So grab these fillet pieces. So what we could have done here is either grab these fillets and then do what I'm going to do is press extrude and then click this far edge. By clicking this far edge, it automatically makes it come to this plane, it comes all the way up through the plane. So then when I just click enter, it'll just fill those in. Nice. Or you could have just removed the entire inside edge and used that inner plane as a cutaway tool and then cut it out. Both would have achieved the exact same thing. But yeah, that, that basically achieves a good part of that cutaway. Nice. Right, I'm going to take a, um, a couple of minute break. Um, literally just like two minutes, just going to roll an ad so I can get some water and uh, get off my feet for two seconds. But we'll be back in a second. Uh, yeah. See you in a moment. Don't go anywhere, else I'll cry. Yeah. Okay, 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 on with the show. Also, my phone just blew up. If you were the one person who just went onto my store and bought, like, everything. Someone just bought six models for my store. 
I'm very grateful. I, I can never understand why <coughs> people will go on and spend 60 quid on buying six different models when you could get all of this, all of those models for $10 by joining Patreon. People seem terrified of Patreon. Don't know why. It's funny. But uh, I am very thankful. I've had two new Patreon subs since this stream started, though, so... If you are in here or have come from here as part of that, thank you very much. It does mean a lot to me, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's it's great, and it helps me be able to justify spending my days and evenings doing this because um, it, it's really useful for helping support my prop business. Also, if this is a format that you are enjoying, it doesn't have to be in the chat here. I know some people just don't like using chat, but. Um, if uh, yeah, if it's a format you enjoy, please do let me know. Um, or if you have any thoughts um, about it in general, you know I'm just wading into the world of full time prop making, and it's a rough and scary sea. So I'm just figuring out still exactly how I want to approach doing it. Uh, yeah, so those thoughts um, and comments are obviously always uh, well received. Right, so let's try something new. This little vertical line here is a cutout. But it's a cutout that goes through the dip. So how are we going to do that? There are a couple of cool ways to do this. Um, I'm probably going to use, I think, the pipe method, which is one of my favorites. So this would come down as a decision of how I would do this. This would come down to the shape of the groove. So if we take a look at the shape, if we take a look. So it'll either be. So this is a squared cutaway. So I'm assuming that this one here and this one here are the same kind of cutaway. So a squared cutaway is one that is directly straight down, um, and it has a flat bottom. You could also have a rounded cutaway, which is kind of like rounded at the bottom, almost as if like you'd taken a a a, a, a cylindrical chunk out. Um, and then you have uh, the you have the uh, kind of the filleted cutaway where would you would do maybe a cut in or you would and then fill it outwards so it'd be like two like like a butt or a peach you know it was it's two lines going in to a center point so depending on what kind of cutaway it is depends on the solution that you maybe want to do um, being a square one means there are a number of solutions for it. The pipe method is one of my favorites, and we'll go through that now. But before we do, we need to just ensure that all of the uh, edges along here are already cut how we want them. So this one, this bottom edge here, needs filleting off. And you can see this one is consistent all the way around, and it's a chamfer, so it's a directional cutaway, which then has fillets to just smooth it off. So we want to make sure we apply those first before doing this next bit, and it just makes life a lot easier. So I'm going to start with a fillet here um, because it will mean that this thing, by applying a fillet here, whatever I apply to that chamfer will apply all the way along the edge. So it's going to be actually a reasonably large fillet, I think, like six maybe. And then another one inside here. So I'm, if, for people who hate shortcuts, I'm pressing F to do this fillet. Um, what's that? Three, four, maybe four. And then this one at the end, I wasn't going to want to have to worry about, but I think I'm going to have to worry about it now. Uh, do I have to worry about it now? No, I can come back to it. Okay, that's fine. When you get into the mindset of doing this regularly, you'll find that uh, you can kind of see 10 steps ahead of your problems which is great. So I'm gonna just stick this to the side and then, okay, just eyeball it a little bit. Though that being said, we do have, we do have the Oracle available in Photoshop. Um, and because we've already got this one open here, we could go here to here and see that that is 40 and the whole thing's 44, so it's kind of like 2.5 in that way. So let's go to 2. 
to start with and then this vertical one play by comparison it's a little bit more so three three why are you not letting me have three mmm okay so it doesn't it doesn't like those numbers now sometimes it doesn't like those numbers because of Let's try again. Hold up. Let's see where it shit the bed. If I just put it as two, it's fine. But if I put it as three, oh, it, it's fine. Hmm. Okay. I don't know why that was not playing ball. You know what? I think it is 2.5. And then maybe 3.5. Okay, great. Boom. Boom shakalaka. And then just like I said, a couple of little fillets on these edges. Oh. Uh, start with a one. Come on, little computer. You got it. Oh, no, it's more than one. Two. That's fine. One point four. There we go. Right. So the reason you want to do that before what we're going to do next is we're going to do what I call the pipe method. I am indeed streaming. Hello, Scarlet Quinn. How you doing? Um, yeah. This uh, this this method. Uh, I call it the pipe method. There's lots of different ways of doing this. So, like I said, there are, there are ways that maybe it wants to invert both sides, um, like a butt, or maybe it wants to cut out a, a smooth channel or a dugout channel. The smooth channel and the dugout channel are both good for using pipes, whereas the inward one, you would maybe want to cut this body in half and, uh, and um, then use like fillets on both sides to create the groove. Whereas if you do it this way, uh, you'll understand exactly what I'm going for in a moment. So let's start by putting a line down the dead center. Huh, wow, if the last time I streamed was doing gear out trousers, that is indicative of how long it's been. Um, I, I did, I did, oh God, yeah. I. I've been on and off streaming for a little while um, since since going full time uh, in prop making. It's kind of justifiable now. I need to uh, be able to justify making lots of different kinds of content. So this is this is it. So we've also got this line here. So I'm actually going to use this as an opportunity to cut this body open at this point here, where that other line is. And then I'm just going to join those. Oh, where'd you go? Thank you very much. It's been a... You know what? It's... I don't know if any people generally know what I did for a living. But until very recently, I... Um, basically designed counter-terrorism software. Um, and it was intense. I got to know a lot about the world that I would rather not... And it was emotionally and kind of mentally destroying me for a long time. And I'd done that for a, a couple of years and I didn't want to do it anymore. Uh, oh, I shouldn't get too carried away here. I'm supposed to be telling <laughs> about what I'm actually doing. Um, right. So what I've done here is created a, uh, a line, which I'm then going to turn into a plane, which I can use to cut this body in half. So over the top here, we've got the solid and... Uh, yeah, surface. And surface is interact with a single face or a single surface. So, for example, if I was to click on here and delete it, uh, nothing happens, obviously. Why is that not deleting? Well, it's supposed to delete. Um, anyway, not worrying about that and pressing on, I'm going to click through this line, extrude it symmetrically. 
and could that do that? Yeah, um, Gare Out Trousers was a long time ago. It's three years ago now since I did Gare Out. Can you imagine? Can you remember? It was uh, stressful. <laughs> it was good though. I, I went to a happy home. So what more can I ask for? Except for the swords. The swords had to steep and the swords are on my wall either side of me here. Still my favourite prop, I think, that I've done so far. Right. So what I've done by doing this line is means now I can cut this whole thing in half using that as a tool to do so. So if I go back to solid and go to, I've got it on my quick things, I use it a lot, split body, and split this whole body using this as a splitting tool. When I click OK, now this is two things, right? If I get rid of that, you've got the front and the back. So get rid of the front and the back. Right, this is how my little trick for this thing works. So what I'm going to do now is create a pipe which goes on that line, oh, uh, chain selection, come on, you should allow me to click this, why are you not allowing me to click that path? To the, right. Okay, it's not going to want to do those two, but it's fine, they can be done separately. I'm going to do a square one, and just for now, I'm going to put this one back in. And just make sure it's and look at it. Just get the kind of width I want it to be. So this section size, I want it to be about what I say one. I'm just comparing it to this one on the left. So around one, one point two millimeters is probably uh, probably sufficient. Yeah, one point two is too big. So one. And just for now, I'm going to use that to create a new body. What you can see about that is that it's followed the line because of the way that we've cut it out. Um, that's the pipe. You should have better naming conventions when you do these, but I just haven't. Um, but this is currently dug in to the uh, dug into the side at 0.5 millimeters. I'd like it to be a bit deeper than that. So what I can do then and just, just do is M for move and actually move it in an amount. So if I was to move it in another 0.5, it would be the full depth cutout would be one millimeter. I don't quite want to go that deep. I want to go 0.3. Just again, gut feel. Sometimes you just need to roll with it. Um, but it is also halfway between this one and the other point. So then I'll do the same and create a pipe on here. And it will have remembered the last thing I did. One, new body. Okay. Um, and then I need to move it in 0.3. Then if I bring the other body back, Using the cutaway tool, so the combine, I can take this one and then the tools I want to use to cut are these two things, but I want to cut. And I'm going to need to use them again to cut away the other half. So um, let's start and by now just by cutting the one. So, okay. And I want to make sure I keep the tools. So the exact thing I didn't do there, because when I was, I was talking about it, I distracted myself. Click there. Cut out using this tool and this tool. Cut, but keep the tools, which means don't get rid of those two pipes. And then do the same on the other side. So the front, use that. Use these two tools. Uh, eight and nine. And now we can get rid of them because I don't need to use them again. And you end up with the two halves with that groove cut out of it. Now, in this gap here where we've just done this stuff, you'll see there's mainly possibly going to be a couple of goofs. What you can do is, you know, literally click on that and click delete, which will give you, what does that give us? Okay, so that gives us that kind of shape. So what I really want to do is kind of like join these bits up properly. Um, so it's going to take a little bit of cleaning, but that's fine. So I can click on there and there. Start there. 
click delete and get rid of those. And then if I click line and put line on here, and just fill up that gap. And I can use this as an independent section and extrude it. Oh, so E to extrude. And that's going to take us there. Okay, so these lines don't quite intersect in a pleasant way. And it's because this one here, the angle of it isn't bang on. So I'm just going to undo a few steps and see if I can look at... Because it's the pain when you've got two things that are square edge that intersect slightly obscurely, you don't always get a perfect result and sometimes sometimes it's as easy as coming in and going oh yeah okay well delete 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 and sometimes it's not in fact does that go into there i should have checked that let's check our references always double check yeah references uh yes it does so i need to add that bit anyway so let's undo the that bit. And there, that's the problem, you see. That that and that are intersecting at different different angles there, like that. There are a few ways of sorting this. What I might do for starters is what's going to be the best way to do this? So you could, it's because it's just an offset plane where the two things don't necessarily intersect properly. I am almost surprised though I can't go around that corner with a pipe. I would, I would have thought that going there to there with a pipe was, was doable. But apparently, oh! Well, blow me down. Okay, well, it is. That's, that's, the, that's the end of that problem. So there, there, there. Create pipe. There we go. That's, that's better. So new body. Them's the brakes, my friends. Them's the brakes. So the one problem you're going to have here now is that I want to move uh, the, the the cutout. I want it to be deeper than it is. Um, but if I try and move this whole thing, if I try and move this whole thing on this plane and just move it in, then this isn't going to have any different effect. It's just moving left and right. So what I want to do is figure out a way of having this able to cut downwards. And the problem with that is that here, it's on this different kind of like angle in. But there are obviously ways of being able to achieve this. So what's gonna be the best way to do it? Now, there is a tool called a thicken tool, which will add some girth to the inside edge. That's one way of going about it. Uh, there are... Hmm, Ah, oh, need to enjoy my Bundaberg root beer. Um, if it was all on one plane, and it like, if it was the fact that this thing here, see that's on one plane, but then here it goes onto a different plane, it goes angular. If it was on one plane, you could just intersect it and, and pull it down. I think the thicken tool is probably going to be my best bet. Um, so what I'm going to do is just use it as it is to cut out the um, you see thicken is here uh, use it as it is actually can I just thicken from here create thicken I thought I could only use it on surfaces it's like there 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 let's just let's just try it on a f those three and see what happens Pretty sure I can use it on. Yeah, 
Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> I'm going to use it to cut away as we did before. There and there, cut, but keep, keep tools. Uh, and then, where's the other one? There we go. That one. And that buddy. Uh, let's, let, let's just keep the tool for now because I might end up using it again in a minute. <coughs> So there's a nice, that's that's basically the good way of doing this. And then I can combine these two sides back together. And I know technically speaking, I need to redo it up here as well. In fact, I should look what that top one needs. Um, actually, it's just, it's just a straight across cut. So I might as well do the same at the top while I'm here before I join the two sides back together. So again, create a pipe, actually select the edges I want to, actually do I need to do any softening on that top edge, just like a fillet of one, maybe not even that, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, okay, which means I should probably just do it across those. I'm just checking my references again here. So slight curve here, bit of a curve around all that edge. Again, you know, sometimes you just have to do things in slightly the right order. Um, I mean, you can always go back if you're not happy with the results. So I'm just applying some kind of like minor filters here. But as I was saying earlier, if we then, if I just apply these fillets, sorry, I apply these fillets now of one. If some point down the line I'm like, oh, I actually want that one to be bigger, I can just come into the timeline tool here, find it, and um, find it and change it. <clears throat> so it don't have to be too worried about it not being the epitome of finesse at this point. So let's say 0 0.6 here, and then the same again here, 0.6 because it's on two halves. Great, uh, let's hide the front of the body and then create that pipe that's going to go around basically this whole edge. So create a pipe. Okay. Oh, there's no fillet on here. Why is there not a fillet on here? Tut tut, Andy, tut tut, okay. I can just do one now, not a problem. 0.6, it's fine. Do, 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 do. If I knew you were coming, I had a big kick. And then, technically, I just need to just jam the one in here. inside bit as well here really let's just do that before I go any further so there there again 0 0.6 is probably fine again if it's if it feels wrong in the end I can come back and adjust but for now it will suffice Okay, so let's create that pipe, and now that it's now that those fillets are there, it should create the whole thing in one go. So again, new body. Show the front piece. Uh, where you at front piece? There you are. So combine and remove this, but keep it. So keep tools, and then combine front with this pipe and keep tools. And we can just hide the tool. And then we can combine the front piece and the back piece back together. Don't need to keep the tool, just join. 
And there we have the method that I would use to create those cut waves. It just means that you don't have to faff about all that much with coming into like these extra bits. Now, <clears throat> I was talking about thickening it and making it deeper. So if we come into surface, um, there is a thicken tool in here. So with the surface, you actually just grab individual layers. So what I believe this should work fine. If I wanted to make this a little deeper, I could come through, grab all the bits. And then create a thicken. Right, well, it does not like that for whatever reason. Uh, so, fortunately, I'm perfectly happy with that cutaway. Um, but there are obviously a number of different ways of getting around it. You could you know, move it in in one plane and then cut off the bit you don't need for another plane and then shift it in that plane. Um, so, yes, that is. There's lots of different ways, but this, this I think, looks perfectly good. Um, you'll, so we'll do a very similar thing with this front bit, but before the front bit's done, the additional section here that doesn't exist yet will need to be placed on there. So I'm not going to get to that bit right now. Instead, let's just do these... these line last couple of details on here um, because it's 20 past ten, uh, 10 past 10 we're going to go until about half past because I am standing on my feet I'm on my new I got one of these new desks that's kind of stand up sit down which I adore I like the fact that I can like I've been on my butt all day so I like the fact I can stand up I think when you're streaming it can be quite um liberating to be stood up. So I'm just going to assume that they're vertically placed to one another, which they seem to be. Which makes it a lot easier to keep them in line. So th minus 36. Point four. Yeah. And then extrude. We'll cut into that. Oh. So let's go minus one to start with. And then add the fillet to the outside edge, which is going to be small, like not four. No, larger than that. Not point eight. And then by clicking C and clicking inside here, it'll automatically give you the center of any circle. So the last one I made was 7.4. So if I make this one seven, and the same up here. Oh, I need to finish the sketch. And make this one seven as well. And I can click both of these and extrude them back. And my, so when you're extruding, if you click on a face that's in the plane that you're extruding, it will come out that distance. So if by clicking on here, it will come back out the one that I went in. Um, and then you can fill it both of these the same. So 0.4, I think maybe less than the, so the other one was 0.8, so, but a little bit less, 0.6, there we go. So that's those two bits, and then the last two bits are these. Um, so we could do the same, we could do, do it one or two ways, really. Um, both of them are pretty easy. Uh, let's start, let's do it this way. Let's, let's create them both separately. So we'll start with the inside-ish edge of the cutaway. That goes to here, so four, it looks like bang on four. Um, okay, so these things are perfect circles kind of like on the edges, the perfect spheres. So if I then go halfway in between these two, bam, bam, and I've got that halfway line. Somewhere on that halfway line has to be a circle. Get rid of that middle line. 
and then I can move this to just get it right. So that's there, that's the first one. And then second one, like 8.2. So copy and paste those again. Then I'm going to use T to trim and take out some of these sections. And then again, I'm going to E now, I'm going to do these aesthetically for now, but later on, when we do another stream of this a bit later on, I'm going to have to show you how we will consider actually putting these work, one of these being a working switch um, in order to properly power the, um, the button. Uh, so minus one. Uh, to power the button. Uh, the switch that powers the lights. God, I'm running away with my own thoughts then because I'm getting two steps further ahead by doing this. Okay, okay, so that's that. And then if we go into this with C, again, it will give us that middle circle. And I know this one's four, so it needs to be a bit less, so 3.6. Um, and then I want to just look at it directly left on. So minus 3.2 maybe, there you go. That's, that's probably fine. Um, and hopefully you remember, you remember the trick that I showed you earlier, which was the one where you would use the center point in order to find a vertical top and bottom properly and an intersect, so there, but then it'll automatically find the intersect for you. And again, you can just use T to trim these bits out if you want. So what I'm actually going to do here, slightly differently, is extrude this. Extrude it out by one. Oh. But instead of creating a new body, then fillet it. Like 0 0.4, it's not going to need much. Fill it F 0 0.4. So this is a new body all by itself. And then I can just control C the body, control paste the body. And just so long as you move by the same amount, which is 18.2, you'll be consistently in the spot. And then you can come back to your solid and just rejoin it all together. <clears throat> so split body, grab that as the thing, and then grab these two bodies to join. So two selected, join, don't need to keep anything. Okay, and there we go. So I'm just going to show you the bit that I spoke about at the very start of this, so you can get an idea for kind of where the next bit is going to go. Um, and it's the fact that <clears throat> now really most of the details on this outside edge are done but obviously the other side is blank. So what you would do at this point is, let's just get rid of the canvas just so we can see this a bit more easily. So I'm going to split it in half. So split body. And the splitting tool is going to be the center line. So which gives us the other side here, which we can remove. And then create a mirror. So this is create mirror of this body, the mirror plane is the same one, and I have to ask it to join. Ta -da! And there you go. Obviously there are some things here, like this needs to cut away better, so we can actually uh, start to dig into this, but I'm not gonna do it right now. Um, an easy way to do this, these two bits, is if I had to go combine this and then cut out using this, 
cut um, and this but then keep them I then got these two bits which I can extrude back uh, it doesn't have to be all the way just far enough that you can't see it let's say four centimeters and then bam bam add those back on and then just there you go. It's just little things like that that you are things that you won't necessarily ever just be taught, except for in obviously this situation right now. Um, but they are things that you just kind of pick up. I think I have time to maybe do this quick bit here. So let's just do that. Um, notice how it goes inwards towards the top so at this bottom point it is 32 and at the top it is 15 so 32 at the bottom 15 at the top it's just something we're going to need to remember uh, so it starts at the very front edge So let's put a line on the center plane. Come on, where are you at, Origin? Because we've got things here already, it will... Oh, well, it should. There you go, give me a point to base that on. Um, what might be actually be easier, though, is I have the original sketch that all this was built from. Um, which one is it? There we go. Is it that one? Yeah. So if I go into that sketch, I can just create a new thing. Right? So I can create a new continuation. We should have no bearing on the other bit. Now, I, I think this maybe has a bit of a sweep at the bottom edge. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's basically a filleted sweep. It's not a real sweep. So I'm going to spang a line up there that I want to be parallel. And it's done that automatically for me. And then one across here and one down to here. And then the tip I showed earlier, so a splice point from here to here, a spline point, sorry, splice. And then add those constraints, this tangent constraint, to show those two things to be like that. And then this one here, you can just adjust. And you can obviously adjust that bit there until it feels right with the sweep. So, I'm going to start by extruding this, the distance that we just said, which there's this bottom bit here, so we just check it again, was 20, uh, 32 at the bottom, 32 at the very bottom. So, finish that sketch. I've, cha I've made changes now, so as you'll see, it's recomputing everything, just to make sure that those changes didn't affect anything, which it shouldn't have done. So, I'm going to extrude that one by... 32 halved 16 on both sides um, symmetrically like that and I'm going to create a new body out of this then from this point to the top point I want it to taper in and I want it to taper in from um, from the bottom which is like 32 out to the top which is 15. So how am I going to do about that? I'm going to do it like this. So I'm going to create a new sketch on this front plane. I'm going to start here. I'm going to go up to the top which is like Should have done it as a proper number, but it doesn't matter too much. 
and then I'm going to go, I said it was need to be 15 at the top. Oh, hold up, is that... Yes. No. This actually isn't that far. It's, um... Let me just get rid of that line. It's, it's not supposed to be to this top line, it's supposed to be this line here. So from here, let's go up to that. Give or take. At least make sure I'm over it. And then out needs to be 7.5, which is half of the 15 that we said is going to be at the top. And then I can attach that to this plane corner, which gives me this bit here. Then I'm going to mirror that. So mirror that line and that line based on this center line, which gives me all this. Then I can take that, that, and that. Let's hide all the bodies that I'm not going to have any use for. Extrude this through all that, but then use the intersect that I spoke about earlier to just keep the bit that is intersects between both of them, like so. So then when I bring all these bits back in, I don't need any of those. You end up with this, which is, you know, pretty much legitimately what I was trying to achieve. Um, so there, so it starts starts uh, wide at the bottom and then tapers its way up. Yeah, really, it is a lot of maths right now, but I mean, it's not really maths. If, if you think, I mean, something divided by two, I guess, is maths, technically speaking. Um, the one last bit that will need to happen with this piece is, fuck it, shall I do it now? Yeah, screw it. Right, okay, let's do it. Is this um, this other pipe cutaway? So this cutaway here, which does it run around that bottom piece? No, so that's fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do quickly is just to add, combine this and this. So combine them together. So they're a single thing. Add a couple of like little, like 0.6s, some little ones, little feathery boys there to give the edge a little bit of softness. Um, and I probably want to do it on these edges here too. Literally just a one, no, not even that, 0.6. <clears throat> okay, and then similar to earlier where we created that line to cut away, I'm not actually just going to draw a vertical line this time. Um, I'm actually, do I need... No, I can do it the way, I think I can do it the way I want to do it. So let's take a line on this plane, just go straight up. Oh, that's, yeah, that's pretty bang on. You can see kind of like, it's almost like a line of best fit. It's not perfectly left or right. Um, it's a little bit to the right on one side, a little bit to the left. That's because the angle that you see that is never truly straight on. Um, and then if we look at this, so that's, how far out is this? 4.2. Um, don't really need the bodies at all at the moment. And send 7.4. That's fine. And join them up. Down. Down. And then copy that. So copy those three things, paste them, move them down, assume that this is going to be the same size because it is 32.2. Okay, so now I've got this shape. 
this is ziggity zag. So if you remember from earlier, we're going to create a surface and extrude that whole thing symmetrically by a lot. And you can't see it because the bodies are all hidden. But it's there. Then I'm going to use that as a cutting tool to cut away this body. So body, split body by this tool. And I don't want to expend, extend the cutting tool, but I do want to specifically use all of it. There we go. Um, it's deselected it all. There we go. Okay. So that's that. So I click OK. This gives me <coughs> the rear and the front as separate pieces. So I mean, it doesn't really matter which one I use, but for argument's sake, let's use this one. And I'm going to create a pipe that basically goes here. Actually, I think I need to select them all first. So there, because if you don't, it doesn't like the right angles and things that you try to put into it. Sometimes this can be really tedious, but you've got to ask yourself if the juice is worth the squeeze, which in this case, I believe it is. So I'm just going to go to the bottom there and then create a pipe from that. Booyah! So a new body from that. It's not quite done the whole thing. It's forgotten this bottom bit, but it's fine because one what I can do is just create another pipe. Doesn't matter. New body. And then a third one. That one does matter a little bit more because it's going to leave me with this thing here, but. As you'll see in a second, it's it's not really that big of a deal. Same same this thing here is going to be slightly problematic. But what I can actually do is um, hide this front section, join up these three things, so they're actually one piece, and then just click on these two faces here. So holding Shift and then whack Delete, and it'll just figure out where it was supposed to be. Noise, and then I want to do it on both sides so I'm actually going to just create a mirror of this thing on the center plane and then join them together and it should automatically just piece them together as into one surround then I can bring back uh, body 16 and body 7 really name your bodies um, I've just been too distracted by doing all this. Um, uh, if the juice is worth squeeze, what fruit is this gun? This this gun is a. Um, it's actually a bag of opal fruits. It's yeah, the best of the fruits. So again, click the one part, click on the the, the tool, and cut it. Keep the tools, and then do the same from the other side. There. Cut. Don't need to keep the tools because it's done now. And then combine front and back. So join them together. Uh, don't need to keep the tools. And there you go. There's that other cutaway groove through the front. So if I get rid of the canvases. There we go. So we've got that. And then we've got these bodies here. And I think that's that's it. All these other ones here are tools. That we don't need to use so all of these we can just if you delete so one big important thing is delete versus remove if you delete it'll 
and remove the fact it has ever existed from your so even if you can see the bottom here all these different moves that we've made tonight if you delete it it will go back to where it first existed and then any other instances that it's affected as it's moved down the line it will change those instances so use delete cautiously by doing remove that's adding a new thing in that says i no longer need this thing so please remove it um and one of those was clearly the actual main body so that was silly uh, so those two i definitely don't need remove there we go so here's where we're at that's the first like two and a half hours of the M6 Carnifex. I'm hoping that it's started to be a little bit of an introduction into how I go about doing these things. Um, there will be a bunch more of these streams and if you are interested in learning other kinds of 3D modeling, on Thursday this week I will be doing a, a new start of a new segment which I call Let's Learn Blender. So Blender is a, a different kind of 3D modeling tool. Whereas this is about maths and all those numbers, Blender's about shaping like more like clay. And it's the kind of a mix between this and ZBrush, which is very much just here's a lump of clay, off you go. Um, so uh, yeah, on Thursday, we're starting a new stream called Lex Learn Blender. I haven't ever used Blender, but it is a tool I know that as a professional 3d modeler i should take the time to learn so rather than me just sitting away in my room during the day and trying to figure it out i thought wouldn't it be interesting to learn it on stream and allow other people to kind of learn it at the same time with me so that's what we're going to be doing so on thursday i'm going to be picking up for the very first time and just opening it up and trying to solve some very simple problems um, and I invite you to download the app. It's completely free, so you can get Blender for free on, on Mac or PC or whatever you use. Um, and yeah, boot it up, be ready, and then we can try and figure it out together if you've never used it and it's something that you're interested in learning. Um, I don't know how it's going to go or what kind of things will, will, will have problems along the way. It will probably be lots of dipping in and out of other YouTube videos and figuring out you know what works what doesn't what we're happy with and uh, ways of solving problems but like i said in this video there's lots of different ways to solve the exact same problem so it's going to be quite interesting i think to to visualize those different the different way that that blender works compared to fusion so that will be at thursday at 8 p.m gmt exactly the same as today it'll be about two and a half three hours so if you do fancy learning blender come and join us then. Otherwise, thank you very much for everybody who joined. Obviously, if you want to f follow my channel or subscribe or whatever, that's perfectly great and I love you for that. Otherwise, you know, all of my other socials, if you want to come find them, you can go to www.thecupid.club and the whole lot are on there. That's thecupid.club. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for your support um, and everything. And to the couple of people who joined Patreon during this stream, um, and actually one person sent me a message saying they did join because of this stream. I really appreciate that, and that you know it really does help me um, stay afloat as a as a full time prop maker and to be able to have the time to create these kind of streams. So that does mean a lot. And uh, yeah, great. Uh, so thank you very much for everything and we'll catch you all very soon. Have a great evening and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.